Hello everyone and welcome to the final chapter of the first year chemistry and that is going to be the environmental chemistry. So I hope you people are doing well and fine. Please do study and get prepared for your annual examinations. Well, as we need to discuss with this particular chapter that is in the environmental chemistry. Now you people may think that this chapter, why is this particular chapter that has been introduced? This chapter has been introduced with a vision, with a view to see that when you people have a successful career, that time you people can come up with some solutions for the ongoing issues of these pollutions. There are various types of pollutions which you will be looking at into this particular chapter trying to understand them. So with a vision, keeping in mind that we have to sort these particular pollution issues in our near future. So this is the main reason why this chapter has been introduced. Okay, so uh, when we speak about the environmental chemistry, so first thing that we need to deal up is the environment, correct? So this environment, environment is nothing more than the surrounding and its components. So when we are saying that surrounding and its component, the component itself is the atmosphere. So when we speak about the environment, Okay, so what we have to understand is this environment contains two simple things and that is there is nothing more than your surroundings and a major component and that particular major component of this environment is our atmosphere. Okay, so when we speak about the atmosphere, this atmosphere is going to be a combination of various type of gases. Okay, now these gases, what are present, these are present right from the surface of the earth and they extend almost up to like a 500 kilometers in altitude. So when it extends, it has a mixture of gases and what these mixture of gases do is they some of them absorb some of them reflect the rays which are coming from the solar systems from the sun okay so due to this particular absorption and reflecting of these particular rays are concerned the temperature is going to vary in the atmosphere okay it's going to vary right from the surface of this earth to an altitude up to 500 kilometers. So you need to understand that this particular atmosphere is nothing more than it is going to contain a cover of gas. Okay. Now this cover of gas is going to extend up to 500 and all kilometers approximation. Okay. So up to 500 kilometers you can expect. Now in this particular case, what is going to happen? The temperature fluctuations occur. Okay, because these cover of gases, they are going to absorb. What they do, the main thing is they are going to absorb. Absorb the radiations which are coming from the sun. Cosmic rays from the solar systems. Okay, so when they absorb, some of them absorb, some of them reflect. So when they start doing these, the temperature varies in the entire atmosphere with respect to its altitude right from minus 100 degrees Celsius to 1200 degrees Celsius. So this is the range of temperature what one can see in different regions of atmosphere. That means this atmosphere has different levels, different levels with respect to the altitude when we compare right from the surface of earth to the 500 kilometers in altitude in the heart. Now in order to understand that First, you need to understand different components or different regions of this atmosphere. Okay, so when you take a look into the different regions of the atmosphere, so what are you going to see? The first region what we have is this particular atmosphere contains the first region and that is your troposphere. Alright, so the second region that what we have is 
stratosphere. Next region, what we have is the mesosphere. And the final one, and that it is going to be the thermosphere. Of course, some studies do also take into consideration of exosphere, which is on the top of this one. Okay, so what we have is the main component regions as right from the toposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. So now when we consider, when we consider the entire altitudes, that's the height, right from the surface of the earth, you will see that when we take it from the surface of earth. Okay, from the surface of earth to 11 kilometers in the altitude, okay, you will find troposphere. That is from surface of the earth to the 11 kilometers. Our first region lies and that is a troposphere. Very important concept or we can say the very very important region of atmosphere and that is the troposphere. Very important because it contains the domain of life. All different forms of life are there in the tropospheric region of atmosphere. Okay, so the first thing is it starts right from the surface of earth to the 11 kilometers in the altitude or in the height. Now, when we look at the stratosphere, the stratosphere continues right from the 11 kilometers to 50 kilometers in height. Okay. Now, when we take a look into the mesosphere, mesosphere starts right from 50 kilometers to 85 kilometers. Final one that is thermosphere, which starts from 85 kilometers to 500 an hour. Okay. Now, most of the flights which fly domestic flights or the international flights. Okay, now these flights which goes from one particular airplane station to the next one usually tend to take up all in the tropospheric region. Okay, now in this tropospheric region what happens is as we go from the surface of earth to the 11 kilometers, okay, we are going up. So that time the temperature goes on decreasing. That means temperature decreases as the altitude increases. So this is a region where temperature, okay, so here the temperature is going to decrease. So with respect to that is with increase in altitude. Now, temperature decreases with increase in altitude. This is the first point. Now, that means as we go from the surface of Earth, at the end of this particular troposphere, the temperature is minimum. And that particular point where the temperature is minimum, we call that particular point as tropopause. Alright, remember this. So, tropopause is nothing more than a particular region where the temperature is minimum in the tropospheric region. And usually that is at the 11th kilometer. Now, as we come from the tropospheric region to the stratospheric region, the temperature again goes on increasing. So, the temperature increases there. Okay, so remember here the temperature starts to increase. The important aspect of this uh, tropospheric region is that it contains ozone. Okay, so ozone is very very important because it absorbs the ultraviolet radiations which are coming from the sun. Okay, so here in the stratosphere what we have is an important region that is the ozone layer. Okay, so this ozone layer as what you can see, this ozone layer is going to absorb ultraviolet radiations and therefore stratosphere is also called as 
This is also called as ozonosphere. All right. Now, when we take a look into the this one mesosphere and thermosphere, these are considered as ionosphere. Okay. Now, why they are considered as an ionosphere, or why are they called as an ionosphere, is because whatever the gaseous atoms, the gaseous molecules that you have in these regions, they are in the form of their ions. Okay. So when the atoms are ionized, when the temperature is quite high, so you can expect at this particular point, that is the thermosphere and mesosphere, the temperature is quite high. Okay. So these are the different what you can say as the different regions of atmosphere. Okay, so what are the different regions that we have? First one is the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, some of them also take into consideration of the exosphere. Right? So we will start with our studies with respect to the environmental chemistry and the first thing that you need to study there is the environmental pollutions right so the next subtopic and that is going to be the environmental pollutions so when we say about the environmental pollution okay now one should understand that how to define an environmental pollution? Of course, we know what exactly do we mean by a pollution, an environmental pollution. We understand that. But the main thing is how to define it. Okay, so uh, when you try to define the environmental pollution, it's nothing more than the addition of a substance into the air, water or soil, knowingly or unknowingly which is going to affect adversely to this entire quality of environment okay so such kind of substances we classify them as pollutants and this entire subject is going to be called as the environmental pollution so uh, speaking with respect to its definition is concerned we would say that the addition the addition of a particular compound or you can say a substance where are we going to add this we are going to add this in either air water or soil right okay now when we add these particular substances in either air water or soil knowingly or unknowingly to such kind of concentration which affects adversely to the quality of environment. Correct. So, what is happening here? Knowingly or unknowingly. Which affects adversely. Now, you need to understand this. Okay, it is going to affect adversely the quality of environment, right? So when it affects adversely to the quality of environment, we classify that entire subject as to be an environmental pollution. Now, what is a pollutant then? A pollutant is a substance which is already existing in nature or you are adding a new type of substance into the nature to such kind of concentration that it is going to affect the entire environment it is going to affect the environment it is going to affect the living things or the most promising effect is going to be on the human beings so when such kind of effect takes place we consider that particular substance to be as a pollutant so when we look at a pollutant now, so we can say that a pollutant is nothing more than a substance which is already present
Okay, there is a substance which is already present in the nature in nature or the addition of a new substance. Okay, so we are going to add a new substance to a concentration. Okay, to a particular concentration which affects which affects the quality of environment and which is going to have an adverse effect on the living beings. Correct. So such kind of substance we regard it as a pollutant. Now, there are different types of pollutants. Different types of pollutants give rise to different types of pollutions, such as there is going to be the gases which are pollutant, there are compounds of metals which are pollutant, there are the pesticides, there are the pollen grains, correct. So when we look at the gases, such as the sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide. These are very important pollutants which are known to affect adversely the entire environment. They are going to adversely affect the health conditions of humans. The nature of plants, it is going to affect the growth of the plants and animals. Okay, so when you take a look into the gases, as the gases are concerned, the gases are such as the oxides of nitrogen. Okay, we know about the carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen, sorry, hydrocarbons are concerned. When we take a look into metal compounds of, when we take a look into the metal compounds, such as the cadmium, mercury, zinc. Okay, so these are effective. When you take a look into the pesticides, pesticides such as DDT, BHCs. Okay, now, of course, even the pollen grains are effective. Now, whenever these particular pollutants come into the atmosphere, if after forming, if they remain the same way, they are not interacting, but its concentration has increased and it is affecting the environment, the quality of life, that time these pollutants which are formed and which remain as it is, those particular pollutants, we call it as the primary pollutants. Okay. So, what are the primary pollutants that we have? Well, primary pollutants are nothing more than the pollutants which are formed and which remain as it is in the environment. They are going to affect the quality of life. Okay, so such kind of substances are considered as a primary pollutant. Now, what is going to happen is these primary pollutants are going to react. There are some cases where the primary pollutants will start reacting among themselves. When they start reacting, that is, these particular gases will start reacting among themselves, it is going to give rise to a new mixture of gases, new mixture of pollutants. So, those particular mixture of pollutants which we are going to get from the primary pollutants, of course, we call them as the secondary pollutants. Okay. So, secondary pollutants are formed from the primary pollutants when the primary pollutants will start to react among themselves. Okay, we have quite a good amount of examples. Among them, the important ones I would like to take here and such as PAN, polyoxy, acyl nitrates. Okay, so it is polyoxy, acyl nitrates. Right? So such kind of secondary pollutants 
are more toxic when we compare to that of the primary conversions. And now this particular way of conversion, right, from the primary to the secondary, okay, now we call that particular phenomena, that is the conversion, right? So here the primary pollutants are getting converted into secondary pollutants. Secondary pollutants are more toxic than the primary pollutants, more damaging. So therefore, this particular phenomena of conversion of the primary into the secondary, we call it as we call it as synergism. Please note G is silent there. So it is synergism. S-Y-N-E-R. G is silent. R-S-M. Synergism. Okay, so this is how the entire pollution takes place. Now you are going to study in detail with respect to the carbon monoxide as a pollutant, further oxides of nitrogen, your hydrocarbons as pollutants and the final one is going to be the sulfur oxides. Okay, so let's see about them in the near future. Take care.